we want to turn to the markets now. Alibaba reporting quarterly results this morning. Shares of the online retailer soaring in the pre-market. Alibaba beating estimates on both earnings and revenue uh, for the latest period. Apple and Twitter we're waiting on. They are expected to report earnings after the close of trading today. And for that, we want to bring in Charles Schwab, Chief Investment Strategist, Liz Ann Saunders. Good morning to you, Liz Ann. Thanks for joining us. So what overall is your take on third quarter earnings season so far? So out of the blocks, it started weak, which was the expectation. If you look more broadly than just the S&P 500, which, of course, is a large cap index, and look more broadly at the S&P 1500, the beat rate, so the percentage of companies beating expectations, is running a little over 60 percent. Now, the problem, though, is that the bot- the top the, the top line beat rate, so revenue beat rate, is actually quite a bit lower. It's under 45 percent. So right now, expectations are for earnings to be down about 3 percent. I think that improves between now and the end of reporting season, but we're still somewhat likely to be in negative territory. So. It is likely that this is an earnings recession. I just don't think it will correspond with an economic recession. Interesting. So you sound somewhat optimistic. Uh, Generally speaking, do you believe that the stock market is going to continue higher through the rest of this year? So I I think this rally that we're in right now does have some legs, but I think we're probably back in more of the trading range kind of environment that we were in earlier in the year before the correction unfolded. And I think what will define when you hit the low end of that range and the high end of that range will be less about things like earnings and valuation and more about the technical conditions of the market, things like market breadth, but also sentiment conditions. And sentiment had really gotten washed out. Investors were extraordinarily pessimistic particularly back in late August when you had the mini flash crash and then the ensuing choppiness thereafter. But since we've had the rally up about 10 percent off the lows, sentiment has swung back up toward excessive optimism. So I think that probably more than anything will define the ebbs and flows. I think we're still in a secular bull market, but we've had a neutral recommendation or a neutral rating on the market this year, which means we're telling investors to just stay at your normal equity allocation. Don't take excessive bets on the upside. Lizanne, you call this uh, an earnings recession, which is a pretty striking word. How are companies going to respond to an earnings recession? What we've seen in the past is they respond by cutting workers and cutting payrolls. What, what kind of responses are you hearing about in the earnings calls right now? Well, I don't, I don't I follow individual companies, so I don't tend to uh, be on the earnings calls. That said, an earnings recession just means that the overall S&P 500 goes into negative territory, but the concentration therein is heavily toward the energy sector. So down over 65% year-over-year growth expectations for just the energy sector. Second to that would be the materials obviously connected to the commodity space. More broadly than that, actually, many sectors are doing quite well, some of which are in double-digit territory on the upside. So this, although overall we're going to possibly see negative earnings, the concentration is very much in the uh, commodity-related space. And we've seen instances like that before where earnings have dipped negative, but it hasn't been an overall economic recession. And that's often been times where you've had a strong dollar and weak commodity prices. Do you think the market is cheap or expensive right now? Uh, neither. I think the market is is sort of in line with uh, median valuations on a trailing or forward P.E. On a Schiller Cape basis, the market's expensive. But frankly, it's been above its long term norm for this entire bull market. So I wouldn't put a lot of weight into that on a short term timing perspective. I think it's neither an opportunity valuation, nor is it a deterrent for the market. Lizanne, but in terms of the expectations for next year in earnings, do you think they're still too high? Because if they are, many people do believe that they're um, still lofty, then stocks would look a lot more expensive if they come down. I think they may be a little bit high, but I think we're in the same pattern and game that um, has been played out quarter after quarter, which is um, looking out several quarters. You probably have estimates a little bit too high. Analysts will ultimately lower the bar too far heading into each quarter, setting up the opportunity for analysts to beat those expectations. So I think we're probably real earnings for next year are probably somewhere in between where estimates are now and where analysts are going to go. Hey, Lizanne, we led off this hour talking about this new national poll out. How closely are you, uh, as somebody who watches the markets so closely, how closely are you watching the changes and the ebbs and flows in the 2016 race for the White House? How important is that and does it play into your decisions and your expectations in the market? 
Uh, it's not really that important at all right now. In fact, I think most of the volatility we've seen in the market really has nothing to do with the presidential candidates. There may be a factor of it that's driven by what's going on in Congress and the potential for a government shutdown. Mm. But I think in terms of market impact, I don't think if we even get it, that happens until we actually have two candidates running against one another and we start to see their policy prescriptions put on the table. We start to see polling closer to the election that may give a bias as to who's coming in and therefore what changes might possibly be afoot. But at this stage, I don't think it's a market mover. Very interesting. And I'll plug the John Hilsenrath's uh, cover article on The Wall Street Journal. Fed strives for clear signal on rate move. Do you believe that we're going to get any indication, Liz Ann, that there will be a move on interest rates by the end of the year? I'd be surprised if they did anything um, terribly bold in this meeting this week. I, I, I think it's very likely that they do nothing in terms of rates, and I'm not so sure they adjust the statement. If anything, they may make sure that in their statement they keep the option for a December move open, which I think they would like to do. But beyond that, I think it would be fairly benign. Lizanne Saunders, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Great I, to have you. I have one.